Här finns mellan 2 och 3 tusen. Jag the young man who became Elvis Costello. No, I couldn't think of anything more ghastly. No, I have no idea. I, I, you know, obviously you look at pictures and say, well, I'm that, I'm the same age as my son is now. So, you know, I, I look at him and I look what he looks like and the manner of him. And I see old clips of myself on, on TV and I think, well, why are you acting like that or something, you know? Uh, but I like the songs, you know, I like a lot of the songs I recorded then and um, I still sing many of them now and I still feel something for them, otherwise I wouldn't do them. När den unge glasögonomen Declan McManus skivdebuterade 1977 så var det som Elvis Costello, en rakblads vass och bitter ung man med elgitarr som spottade cynism omkring sig. Det var i alla fall vad världen skulle tro. It's a competitive world, you know, if, unless you make a uh, shout and scream a little bit, people don't pay any attention, particularly not early on. You have an outlandish name, that'll get people's attention. It's that sort of area. There was a kind of a persona created around you, even if it was maybe something that the press uh, yeah, did very I much. Sort of, I made it up with one particular journalist one afternoon. I drank 14 pernos and we got very drunk together and I said all these very outlandish quotes and many of which got reprinted as if they were the absolute gospel truth. Still to this day I read them, you know, and it's amazing to think that it was like we were laughing saying I'd say these outrageous things and he would write them down and we would laugh about them and it was almost like we were conscious of the fact that we were kind of myth making at the same time so there was some truth in some of the things. It's funny to think that it became such a profound and how easily taken in people were by that. Because yeah. I think really what I, I found I mistrusted from very early on was the willingness to romanticize anything, you know. And I could hear the, the songs I was writing that was more, there was more to it than just this one point of view. And it was obvious to anybody who had ears. I get so angry when the teardrops start, but you can't be wounded because you got no heart. Just like watching the detectives. Efter att ha blivit fånga i sin egen myt slutade Elvis ge intervjuer under fem år. Istället ägnade han sig åt att utforska musikens oändliga möjligheter. En viss rastlöshet med pseudonymen fanns ändå kvar och minnade så småningom ut i ett sista försök att rätta till allt sammans. Somewhere in, along with the mid 80s you sort of went public with the putting Elvis Costello to rest the handle. I think I think certainly to, yeah I tried to do it through that that maybe was making maybe more of a drama out of it than needed to be in retrospect but it was just a way of sort of pointing out to people that it, it had all been sort of a construction all, all, all along. And it worked to some degree, but then people just, they just, instead of concentrating on the first thing, they just concentrated on that instead, and they still didn't listen to the music, or at least in the media. So I just stopped worrying about it after that. played around just as much uh, musically uh, mm. with genres and collaborations. Yeah, I wasn't really, I played them, I didn't, wasn't playing around in a frivolous sense. I think I, I followed my enthusiasms or passions for music wherever they led and I've can, always done that. Passionen och entusiasmen har de senaste 10-15 åren lett till allt mer överraskande och intressanta samarbeten och genreexperiment. Förutom att ha skrivit låtar med Paul McCartney och andra popgiganter han kastat sig in i sammanhang som skulle vara rätt främmande för de flesta vanliga rockstjärnor. Days 
These collaborations, uh, do you find it more fun or more inspiring to, to sometimes work with other people? Or? Well, of course, you, you share the responsibilities, and sometimes you have to you have to be prepared to give up certain feelings you have about about the way something should go because you know it's their record, or ultimately it has to fit in with something that they're doing. So if you're not prepared to do that, there's no point in joining in, you know. Uh, but I have really enjoyed a lot of the work that I've done in that, of that ma manner. I think some of it's very good. And I came out of it with a lot of, I don't know what it is, lessons, that, 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 you know, techniques that I learned, different ways to use my voice, different ways to write. Each new thing is a part of the learning. It's like an education in progress, you know. Men Costello, som man alltså fortfarande kallar sig, är inte bara en stor lärjunge. Senaste bejublade samarbetet med låtskrivaren legenden Burt Bacharach hade ju knappast blivit av om Elvis inte hade något alldeles speciellt att komma med själv. These rooms play tricks upon you Remember when they were always filled with laughter I bring different qualities to uh, sing. You know, I, I, I know that I have limitations as a vocalist, but I can do things that other technically better accomplished vocalists can't do. Emotionally, I have more, uh, I'm more of a daredevil vocally than some, you know, trained singers because they're, or even pop singers that have finer voices, naturally finer voices, because they're very protective of them. I have nothing really to lose, you know, I, I, I like taking risks. I did a gig in 1981, 82 with the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra, 80-piece orchestra, first time I ever worked with anything of that size. We had one rehearsal and a sound check. And my dad rang me up on the eve of the show and he said, do you, you know what you're doing, you know? I said, I said, well, you know, I've sung with a, at this point, I'd only really ever sung with a band, you know, with a combo. I said, I think I do. And he, and he said, I've only got one piece of advice. He says, never look up to a note, always look down on it. That's possibly the only piece of technical advice he's ever given me, but I mean, it's very good. So there was really nothing, and my grandfather used to say, you can't fall, there's nothing to stop you. I have no idea what it means, but it basically is something you say to kids that's nonsensical when they're afraid of, you know, they're going to fall off a wall or something, you know? And that's really what you've got to be like when you do this. This house is there's nothing I can do. This house is empty This house is empty now. Ja, men det är väl härligt med folk som är riktigt nöjda med sig själva och vad de håller på med. Elvis Costello ser du i början av mars i Nike här i SVT. Han pratar om låtskriveri. Men eh, det här är musikbyrån och vi har en liten konsumentupplysningshörna här. Ja, så ni vet vad ni ska lägga pengarna på. Mm. 